welcome to a secret location here in LA where myself and my man Zach have been invited to an exclusive premiere of a brand new Cadillac. And we're about to show you that Cadillac. So Zach, tell me about the electric Cadillac lineup. So as it currently exists, we've got the Optic at the entry level, the Escalade IQ at the upper end, and the Lyric between the two. And now we have another entry. And there it is. The 2026 Cadillac Vistic. Now this slots above the Lyric and below the Escalade IQ. And that's a clue because this is an all electric three row family SUV. So let's start at the front and we'll talk about the design language. We were just chatting with the de designer and he said that what they did was they took inspiration from the Mandalorian. Can you believe that? The Mandalorian, you remember that kind of T-shaped mask the Mandalorian wears? Yeah. Well, do you see it in this hood, in this fascia? And particularly this element right here with the turn signal, the outer edges of the grill, and then the vertical uh, DRL and headlight assembly right here. Yeah, there's nine of these guys. Remember the uh, Acura had that as well? Yeah, this is a little reminiscent of Acura's Jewel Eye headlight design. It's just uh, mounted vertically here this time instead of horizontally. You know what this bottom one does? I have no idea. Why don't you tell the folks what that one does? It steers, it turns. So there when, you you're go. Going, when you're going around, so you get turn. a cornering lamp. Yeah, yeah this nice. color. It's really cool. It's called opulent blue, and I think it does look expensive, and it does look <laughs> really good. Particularly now, for a Cadillac, that's uh, right on the nose, don't you think? Yeah, right on the nose. Now, Zach, <laughs> how many models are there, and which one is this? So we are looking at the sport trim of the new 2026 Cadillac Fistic, and there are four trims, uh, three at launch. So this is the sport. There's also a luxury that uh, start off the lineup. And the difference between the Sport and the Luxury mainly are in the wheels right here and the dark exterior trim elements, particularly around the windows. So you'll actually have brighter, bright work as such right there. And then above those two, you will have what's called the Premium Luxury. Those are the three trims that are going to be available at launch in early 2025. Now, next summer, there's going to be yet another model called the Platinum. And if you folks are steeped in Cadillac lore, then you'll know the Platinum is going to be the most expensive, the most luxurious, the most kind of ostentatious of all the trims. And you know how you know it's an electric vehicle? Look at that, it's got hidden door handles. I hate hidden door handles, but that has become a thing. Thank you, Tesla. I think the most interesting and unique design feature of this vehicle uh, is this right here. It's this kind of interesting I would call it laser pattern. And I was talking with the designer and he's basically told me that those little designs, which actually create an interesting pattern on the rear seats, which we'll show you later in this video, yeah. kind of are like laser shooting from this split right. rear taillight right here. And you move forward through that design element. Now in the back, what we have is something that I find a little confusing, but let's talk about it. It says 900, that's 900 Newton meters, Zach. And that's how Cadillac's been doing it lately with all their vehicles. So that translates to about 600, say 664 pound feet. About. Um, it's not quite what Cadillac rates for the Vistic. Cadillac rates the Vistic at 615 horsepower, still pretty potent, and 650 pound feet of torque. And I think the E stands for electric and the four of course stands for four wheeler, in this case, all wheel drive. Now yes. we do have this black bar that comes across, which is a recent design trend, which makes the car look a little bit wider, gives a little bit more road presence. Uh, and then you also have uh, this kind of cool emblem in it. When you do that, like the old Volkswagen, oh, we don't wanna show them yet. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> we wanna save that for a little bit later. You guys are gonna watch this entire video, but that uh, it's kind of a cool touch. It operates, obviously, the electric tailgate. Now, let's talk numbers, Zach. So we're looking at a battery that is very similar to the Lyric, 102 kilowatt hours. Correct car is nine inches longer than the Lyric. You Same wheelbase. You can get 23s, which now haven't announced range because electric cars are all about range, but figure if it's the same battery as the Lyric, it's gonna be in the 300 mile range, uh, except if you put on 23s, and I suspect it would be <laughs> a lot less. So these particular wheels, uh, if you're curious, are 21s. We're sitting on Goodyear Eagle all seasons here, but you can get 22s on certain trims, and then on the upper end of the range, you'll be able to spec 23s. What's the charging rate? It's a 
400 volt architecture, we know that. So 400 volt architecture, Cadillac says that you can recharge up to 79 miles of range in 10 minutes um, when you're at that peak charging rate, right when you're in the meat of that charging curve. So we're, so, we're talking 200 kilowatts. Ish. Ish, max yeah, charging. 190 kilowatts. If it were 800 there. volt architecture like the Hummer EV, let's it say. It would do 350, but 350. as such, it does not. Yeah, but the number that I think is really important that I think people like because well, I think most people who drive cars like the fact that electric cars are quick. And this one is certainly no slouch. Zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Uh, so when I was a young man, that would have been like Ferrari Lamborghini numbers. And now you're, uh, you know, your family hauler uh, can outrun many a car from the stoplight, which is what people really like about electric cars. So let's For jump sure. inside, Zach, and let's show them the inside. One thing I want to point out real quick while Rome is jumping in is those pop-out door handles are on a lot of Cadillac CVs. Weirdly, they're not on the Escalade IQ. I just thought I'd point that out. All so right, then... so we, we do have kind of some good and in my opinion, some bad. So I love the fact that we've got these real controls. Sam from Wheel Bearings is on a holy pilgrimage to get designers to stop putting in controls for vents in the screen, but there's a lot that's controlled by the screen. We're looking at HVAC that's five zones. So you've got two zones in the front, two in the second row, and one in the third row. There's a separate, we'll show you that later, control for the second and third row. Uh, we do have a round steering wheel, Zach. How cool is that? Yeah, because a lot of SUVs, and particularly SUVs in the luxury segment, are going for kind of this squircle design. Yeah, the Nautilus. Yeah, and it's kind of a love it or hate it sort of thing. So if you're a fan of circular steering wheels, you get one here, and this is a clue to uh, an advanced feature that you get. Also, two-spoke, much like the Optic and the Lyric and the Celestique, all of Cadillac's latest EVs. So, so you're getting Super Cruise, of course. You're also getting yep. a heads-up. And you're getting a heads-up, get this, with augmented reality, which means that it'll overlay over the hood, kind of the navigation system, show you where to turn left. It's a really cool feature. My favorite feature is this Mercedes old-school style seat control, uh, where you can easily deduce what you're doing forward, backwards, you know, up, down. Uh, and then of course, because this is a very luxurious car, you've got both vented and uh, heated seats. You've got a heated steering wheel right there. You've got this mystery V. I'm guessing that's mm. something to do with the CTS-V throwback, right? Yeah, real quick while we're on the seats, what does that circular button do? Uh, that circular button uh, does your lumbar support, which also activates a little massage so you can massage cool. uh, yourself or your passenger. You do have a traditional gear selector, uh, which is good. Uh, you do have these haptic controls over here on the steering wheel. I'm not a big fan, but you do have traditional more or less uh, so volume. So you get a mix, yeah. Uh, and then you got this uh, roller for the volume knob. Not a big fan. What does this thing do, Zach? So that is a rotary just command dial for the infotainment system. So up here, if you use that dial, then you can just move through your menu options. If you don't want to use the touchscreen, again, it still is a touchscreen. Um, Google built-in infotainment system, by the way, so you get certain Google apps kind of natively built in. You get Google Assistant, Play Store, it uses Google Maps for navigation right there. So you can still operate it through the touchscreen if you want to. But if you don't want to fumble around with that, and particularly if you don't want to take your eyes off the road, then you can just Put your hands on this style instead. And then while these are, again, haptic feedback, so these aren't actual bespoke individual buttons, you know, eventually I think you'd learn how to feel these out so you can um, operate them without having to resort to the touch screen. Gotta say, Zach, I'm not feeling uh, the headlights in the screen. Yeah, so if you're over on the left hand you know, side over there, right there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling that because, uh, you know, if the screen goes bad, uh, turning on your headlights may be. A little interesting. So my favorite design feature on the interior, and I was talking to the uh, interior designer, uh, is this right there. So that is uh, copper-infused carbon fiber. I think it looks really cool. I, I love the look of that. I think it looks expensive and it looks modern. Uh, and it's probably my favorite thing on the inside here, uh, aside from the fact that they actually have real vents and a real steering wheel. And I know Absolutely. that sounds crazy, but it's true. My other favorite fa feature is right there. Uh, it's a camera-based uh, rear-view mirror. Now, the first time I saw this was in the Bolt, but the second time I saw it was when we bought that Defender, remember? And yeah. I was driving up in the mountains, and the 
snow had covered the rear windscreen and this was so nice because I was able to actually see out the back. Uh, now let's talk about the second row. So shall we move back there? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's see how much room there is back here. All right, now this particular prototype has uh, captain's chairs in the back, but you can get it as a bench seat, uh, which would give you obviously one more uh, person of seating. Uh, you do have, like I said, this enormous sunroof or glass roof, which makes for a really nice, bright interior. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is if you can get around the front of this, I forgot to mention this, uh, it has 23 speakers, Zach, including in the headrest. That's becoming a thing, and I like that because you know, putting speakers right by your ears seems like a very smart idea. Now, yeah, AKG sound system, by the way. And also, while we're on the subject, I did want to point out there are even more speakers in the headliner. So if you want to go through and actually count all them out, they do add up to 23, amazingly, in a car this size. Now, I'm a little on the tallest side, 6'2", so I, I'm not exactly loving the legroom, but let me see if I can move the seat back. There you go. Now I got legroom. I got sufficient headroom. You know, it's nice. I got a good shoulder room. Uh, but the question, Zach, is... What's the third row like? And this, How gracefully can you actually get into it? Well, there's a button here that makes getting into it really easy. Why don't you press it and show them? Yeah, and I'll, I'll press mine too. So it's just a one, you press that button, it's just single action, seat comes forward, slides out of the way, so you can actually get in. Yeah, it's sweet. And then third row, of course, is a little bit on the tighter side. I'm not even gonna move these back. because not, gonna... not necessarily meant for adults. I don't want to crunch you in by uh, putting that up either. But but the coolest thing, look at this dude. I got my own You personal... actually get your own sunroof. I do, and then remember I was telling you about these light patterns that are cast by these laser-like... <laughs> uh -oh. If anything, I think they're a little bit more distinctive inside because it's dark and it's not that uh, silver kind of color on the outside of the glass. It's actually black on the inside. And then once again, we have our own vent controls back here and including USB-C, uh, and I would say this is a great place for anybody under 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not the biggest of spaces, but then again, you've got the Cadillac uh, Escalade that's coming up that's gonna be much bigger. So what does this compete with, Zach, as we go look at the back? So um, one more thing I wanna mention actually on the second row while uh, Roman gets out there is for the folks in the third row, uh, Roman mentioned the climate control zone, so you get two in the front, two on the second row, and then the second row passengers actually control, by way of this screen, the third row uh, climate control as well. And it's just a single zone back there where you can control fan speed and also temperature. This That's, is kind of cool, you can do this. We'll show you in the second how you can do that electrically, yeah. uh, which gives you a lot more room. But, like I was saying, uh, what does this compete with, dude? So as far as three row electric SUV competition, you know, amazingly, there's still not really a lot. Um, there's the Rivian R1S. That's the one that immediately springs to mind as far as size, um, projected price at least. We don't have exact pricing on this and intent. Um, Kia EV9 is another one. It's a similarly sized one. So upper trims of that model come out around 80 grand. The Hyundai Ioniq 9, which is coming in the next few weeks. The Tesla Model X and the Mercedes EQS SUV, at least on the upper end of the price spectrum. Now check this out, this is good and bad. The good news is, you know, it's not a huge amount of space back here, but if you lift this up, look at that, holy cow. So the good news is you got this big ass cubby hole where you could put probably a roller bag. The bad news is you're missing a spare tire. So yeah. instead of a spare tire, you've got these, they don't even run flats, they're tires with, we used to call it slime when I was biking a lot. Mm -hmm. Basically it's a compound that's in the tire that if you get a flat, it hopefully seals the tire, but yep. hopefully is probably the word. Oops, Actually, sorry. real oh, we quick, forgot. we forgot yeah. to do the seats. Sorry. So I'll uh, just show you guys while we're back here. So for the second row, you get a bank of switches here. The first set control the second row, which is actually just mechanical drop for the second row. So you can push a button and the seat falls down. Do it again with the right one. So those just drop. So if you want to put those back up again, you will have to go to the rear doors and actually manually put those back up. However, the second bank of switches right here is for the third row of seats, which are power operated both up and down. So if you push the button there, it takes it a second, but it will actually fold down. And then once you actually do that, you get a fair amount of cargo space. Yeah, I mean, if you had a, not a, not a captain's chairs, but a bench back there, you could throw a lot of stuff in here. Then. Yeah, and like, then when you're ready to use the third row again, just push those buttons. And they will come back up. 
Yeah, like and then when they come all the way back up, you just have to fold the headrest back into place, and then you're good to go. Blaze, uh, our, our Bernie's Mountain Dog, would really enjoy uh, all the space in this car. Oh, now it goes up. Of course it does, Zach. <laughs> uh, so let's talk uh, pricing. Uh, we're going to speculate, guys, so yeah. we can kind of sort of guess. Uh, where does the Lyric kind of start and end, Zach? So the Lyric starts, uh, this is before you factor in any federal tax incentives, right under $60,000, right around $60,000 when you factor in destination charges. And it tops out in the upper 70s. So we're guessing on that basis that this is going to fall, obviously, right between the Lyric and the Escalade IQ. So we'll start maybe mid 60s for the luxury and the sport, and then go up into the 80s, possibly 90s, it, it, uh, it even with the tickle, platinum. Might tickle the 90s. You yeah. know, the electric Escalade is definitely going to be over 100. Yeah, that's six figures all day long. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> I, I think this is kind of the the value proposition if you want a third row. Um, is there a gas equivalent to this in the Cadillac lineup? Yeah, so basically what we're looking at here with the 2026 Cadillac Vistic is an electric version of the X-T6. Apparently the uh, police have found our secret location. You can uh, at least drive this around and uh, in complete silence and uh, not make a bunch of noise. <laughs> the other thing that, you know, I think is unique here is that this is GM's fifth electric car. Can you believe that? Five now. So in a world, it's interesting that you mentioned that because in a world where automakers are pivoting more toward hybrids, um, not necessarily doing this headlong rush into EVs that everybody was planning a few years ago, Cadillac is still on track to become an all electric brand with and that is, many models. And this is built in America, I believe. In Spring Hill, Tennessee, in fact, the same place as the Lyric and the X-T6 actually, and the X-T5 as well. Now, uh, if this is something that you think works for you and your family and your Bernie's Mountain Dog, uh, we're looking at on sale date, second quarter of 2025 as a 2026 model year. At least for the uh, three trims, the Sport, the Luxury, and the Premium Luxury. The Platinum, uh, Cadillac says, is late availability, so count on that more like second half of 2025. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, you're complete tour of the brand new Cadillac Vistic. Let myself and Zach know in the comments below, does uh, Cadillac GM have a winner on its hand? Is this something that you'd be interested in? And I know the answer to that because, you know, even though this is going to live on our EV channel, people are still going to hate the fact that it's electric. That's the way of the world currently, isn't it? But we'll let you make those comments. And as always, head on over to alltfl.com for more news, views, and of course, Cadillac Vistic. By the way, there's one on the front and one on the back. Looks like a it's holistic, Zach. Holistic emblem <laughs> for Cadillac. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao.